the Orn up towards the top side for Rich, as uh, he's going to try and augment the damage that Peanut's going to put down. I think uh, when you have a Graves in the jungle. allow him to guarantee that he's not going to be behind going into the late game. Ooh, this is not a fight I didn't think that Umpty wants to commit to. No, he's going to have to flash to get himself out. This yeah. lens is picked up as well. And now Umpty finds himself in melee range with two people in first blood very comfortably. Goes over to Peanut. Lava doing his very best to try and trade back here as the death ray is going to be flashed. There's just simply nothing Duck Dom and Kellen could do about this. So it is going to be a nice objective going over here. And yep. you know, Atlas, uh, I feel like we talked about the mid damage earlier being very, very. Hey, yeah, true. Damn. Very impressive. Nice work. Um, yeah. Able to at least alleviate that stat issue that they had. Baby steps, beat uh, Dom one Kia, then get a Herald. All right, well, there's the slow under Henna for the Storm out very early, but they just go straight for the Thresh, and Henna takes so much damage. Kellen gets himself out as well as Doc Dom with one extra minion here. is going to keep himself safe, and now Henna with no Featherstorm finds himself surrounded underneath this outer turret, and there's no help on the way whatsoever. No teleports to be picked up, no nothing, as now Henna's desperately going to try and make this one work. It ain't going to, though. As two turret shots be damned. There's waiting for the next minion wave to kill him. Is meanwhile they're going to continue this. Yep, another dive towards the bottom side. As Rich is just going to make sure that that thresh isn't going to get anything done. Look at all the wards. You can't click nothing. Nope. No gold back. Uh, as you know, often those wards don't go down in opportune places and often get removed immediately. But uh, I, think I think you'll that's take a small the small price to pay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, let's find out. Yeah, it's cloud. I, guess I said let's find out as if there was any question. Yeah, he don't. needs to be landing these. This is so important. This is his time to shine. As Peanut hops over the wall, he's going to clear out some extra vision, but information still gained as that's the bubble. That's exactly what you want to land as Kellen. It's going to be much more difficult for him to engage on anything right now as he's had to get over the wrong side of the wall as well. Peanut, we're going to try and make this a 50-50 as Bro, let's see whether they can actually win a team fight off the back of this one as Umti finds himself at the back of the pit. It's going to be the Zyre of all people that locks down the dragon as that's a great stun to avoid the last part of the Orn Orn and Rich is going to get taken down. No, sorry, Hoy is just going to get taken down. Rich not able to get too much more, but the Zyre is going to fall once again. Hoyer also goes down, and Nongshim continue just picking up kills over and over again. They don't really care about these uh, objectives so much if they can just kill all the champions on the map. Yeah, and look at the damage output across the board. Lava has the highest, and, you know, it was a really, really extended fight where, you know, I, I wondered how Credit Breon were going to actually force Nongshim to take a fight on Drake, and the reality is they they took the fight to Nongshim, right? They they had Drake control, but then they pushed towards mid, started poking graves. Just don't ask the streamers what they feel about the AP jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is one of those fights where actually Nongshim gets control first. So we have to see, like, this is just too slow, unfortunately, yeah, for Fred Brion. Yeah, just as well, so not even able to get that soul that they've been looking for. Rich looking for an engage, but Lava's over the wall. He's going to be spotted out. Lava's got teleport. I think this is a really good fight for Fred Brion. Just teleports back in. Ooh, I like the flank angle as well. I feel like Nongshim really need to be careful how they're fighting this. Oh, good bubble is going to connect there. Eclipse will mitigate some of the damage, but special delivery does go into the stopwatch, though, and Peanut secures the dragon. The Leona is going to fall. The objective does go the way of Nongshim. They can go for a disengage if they would like to, and it looks like Fred at Breon not actually interested in pushing the issue here just a little bit. There's another killer instinct, but immediately Delight goes into his stopwatch, gets himself out of the area with the flash as well as the collateral damage, not able to finish off the threat. And Fred at Breon... The mobility to chase uh, that the Gale Force would have granted, but I think in this scenario, the Immortal Shield Bow ends up being a really great choice, because he can really force Fred at Breon back a lot of the time. So here we go. Well, yeah, in goes Hoya, grabs a decent cast, but Dr. Massive Shield. The Leona immediately falls down, but Nongshim still have their carries alive. Peanut gets a lot of value with the collateral damage, and Hoya will fall down the front line. A bit of a mess right now, but Henna's started to build some items up. He does some damage, and Dr. Dom has to get out of there. Not feeling like the Kaiser is quite as strong in comparison to the Zyre at this stage. But uh, still, a messy fight and a one-for-one. One. No one really walking away with any big advantage. Yeah, and Nongshim are going to look for the Baron's start here. And Lava's still alive. They don't have Ornhorn. Again, so they can't control this choke. They have to let Fred Breon spill in. And this is very dangerous, but they've got a very fast clear time. And I think they will get yeah. away with it. They're just... Unfortunately, Lava's not here enough, early enough to, to throw Paddle Star. Lava, he's moving real fast. That Paddle Star not going to really find the mark. And it feels like Nongshim, like, neither of these teams have actually won a team fight. But Nongshim yeah. do have the advantage now with the Baron. 
as this yeah. has just been a very, very strange game, Wolf. It's, it's just one of the weird ones. It's as now weird. Rich finds himself well and truly in the front line. That is a double stun out from the solar player, though, as finally Helen finds the value he's been looking for. The Ram comes in, and Doc Dom also joins the back line. Lava goes golden, but he's going to go straight to the death chamber after that. And as I say that there's no... There's not been a real team fight win. It's a triple kill for Doc Dom, and this might just be the end of the game. Yep, taking one for the president there. <laughs> kind of, you know, you can see, you can feel that bot love, right, between support and AD. But this is going to be the end of the game. Some really sloppy engages across the board for a Gnome Shim Red Force that were significantly ahead throughout the game. Just struggled to close it out, struggled to take those objectives, but they will collapse the Nexus in the end. And this draft. For Fred and Breon did not work out as intended. They actually really lost out in the early game. It was such a long game that you have to... The uh, Kindred Ultimate, that's certainly going to be valuable as the Aatrox actually picked into Rich. Wow, now that's a throwdown if ever I've seen one. So, this is cover. And with lane priority on the bottom side, that is definitely high value as Umpty's going to come in, look to clear out this ward. Peanut going to follow him through as Rich. Has created teleport. some decent distance, and yeah, exactly right. The Zoe going to come through. A late teleport to follow up as that value from the shield is massive. Umpty getting taken down very low as Rich finds the first blood with a beautiful body slam flash. And Hoya got baited by Peanut's positioning as well. Bay picks up a kill, and Rich isn't done. He's got double buffs, and he wants to tell Hoya that this is his champion, and he will do so. Well, that was a pretty phenomenal team up going to happen. Yeah. And this is a great start already, you know, 3-0 now for Nongshim Red Force. And it's, uh, it's going to continue by the looks of things as Bay's still up here towards the top side. And Hoya is just relegate, relegated to underneath his turret. Peanut going to pick up a kill there. I believe he got himself a mark. Peanut didn't have uh, his mark set up. Uh, on the Aatrox, it was in fact uh, set to lava, so... Not gonna get there, there's the flash forward from Kellen. Oh no, Delight gets a decent face breaker, but Peanut's here once again. This early game has just been dominated by Peanut, and his positioning around which should help his, uh, his power in this lane, as Bay didn't quite have his Paddle Star available, and that's it in the end, but doesn't do too much damage, as here's another engage. Delight's gonna be able to take down Peanut to start this one off, as the attract repel... Not very attractive <laughs> for Kellen as he's just going to fall down and uh, picks up that kill. So bro answer back with a couple of ready as uh, here's another Herald take. Henna gets tagged by the Void Seeker as Rich is doing his best to try and zone them with barrels and things of the like. Everyone on bro has grouped up though. And we're looking at Bay to see whether he can land some of these trouble bubbles to make things work. Oh, the cask is great. Out from Rich as Doc Dom gets into the back line. Henna takes too much damage, has to flash away to safety. And now Hoyer as well. He's running away. Kellen diving on into the back of the pit. It's the Thunderdome here for Nongshim as Lava dives out of it. He doesn't want anything to do with this, but Rich is chasing him yet again. Lava, unfortunately, always having to deal with this fat guy chasing after him. And the dash over the wall from Hoya. Is you at all. As Peanut will be able to help grab this Mountain Drake. And we will get the bad news. Uh, so. uh, no! <laughs> Thankfully, Cast first it. As we do get an ocean. Not exactly the greatest, but still better than a cloud. And still the prettiest drift. Yep. As uh, we've got a bit of a clap towards the bottom side. Teleport in. There's the man drop. And... The ulti comes through from the set. Kellen goes golden, actually buys a lot of time underneath this turret. He will eventually fall down, and it will be Henna delivered the kill. And this turret should go down at the same time. Peanut gonna trade it for Shirley towards the top side, but it feels like a consolation prize. As uh, that kill and getting your Samira as fed as possible feels like the game plan yeah. here for Bro. That is definitely the game plan, and that's what they've been trying to operate around. You know, these aggressive skirmishes. Samira should be getting close to her immortal shield bow. Might buy it on this back right now. We're still not in the late game yet. This is a big power spike for Hannah to, to tr clean up this fight if he can do it. I mean, this is their last chance really. Ooh, that that bubble. Absolutely amazing landing on the lava, stopping him from getting any of these this poke damage through. Keep your eye on Bay. These sort of fights, exactly where Zoe thrives. As Peanut trying to dance away from Hoya here, who does, a, does have a decent flanking position, can humble that to get himself in there. Portal jump comes down as Rich has found Umti. Barrel comes in as well. Peanut in smiting position. He should be able to take this one. No, the smite comes in. And it is taken.
taken by Umpty, but this is an absolute cavalcade of a fight. Dog Dog dives into the back line, has to flash out immediately. He's lucky to survive. And the rest of the team, they're there to clean off as Rich from the back of the pit throws in a barrel. But Delight just going to burn to death. And this fight is all about the Zoe Bay finally having that pop-off experience as he picks up his flash, throws a bubble into Narnia. And Hoya is going to try and walk away as best he can. Dog Dom just gets out of the fight and looking to try and take down an inner turret. And this was yep. a huge one for Nongshu. Absolutely massive. 4,000 damage to Bay in this fight as Hoya tries to escape. Oh, no. Oh, gets actually oh. a trade onto Kellen. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Knockup comes down onto Rich as well. I mean, Hoya's going to die, but he's already got value out of this one. Bay going to try and pick up an unofficial quadra kill, but Rich is going to steal that one away for himself. Yeah, yeah I know. Is I know. Bay doing thing. enough? You're making this uh, series more interesting for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, another thumbs up and another bubble connects. More points. Make sure you get that tally done as Delight clears out the ward as well. I love wants this. to get her head into another turret. All pipe dreams, it feels like, in the face of what has been such great heal from Kellen to set up for these big explosive Zoe fights. Well, this is a big explosive man drop into the blue side jungle of Nongshim Red Force. Unti is going to be pushed against the wall as Rich is a brick wall in this game. Doctor, I'm going to grab that first kill as Henna, he tries to pop off around the fight, but he's not going to be able to. Double kill comes in. Rich continuing to try and find more as Hoya wants to be a hero, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. The Zoe grabs that one and now Delight finds himself on the wrong side of the map. Lava in the same position. They found the safety of their turret on the bottom side last time as Rich just accepts the gameplay and says, Happy B, everyone. Ace comes through. Nongshim Red Force looking for the back. Yep, this is going to be an easy... With the backs, because everybody was very low, with the back timing there for Debrion go in and grab this Ocean's Drake. But, uh, yep. Nothing, you know, nothing to write home about, honestly, though, especially with the composition. You're not, I mean, I guess it's, it's helpful against Zoe's poke in some of these skirmishes, some of these vision fights where you see the poke coming through, like something like this. But it's not going to help you in team fights straight up, which is where Nongshim Red Force have complete control. Well, I mean, I actually think the value of Ocean's pretty high for Fred of Brion, but unfortunately, it's not when you're down by 10,000 gold. I mean, you're just going to pop in one shot anyway. Uh, by no. Bay, even Doc Dom could just <laughs> Kathy and rain someone to death at this point. It's uh, getting very, very scary. The damage is just feeling too high for Nongshim as they break down the last turret on the top side of the map. Inhibitor the last one remaining as they've just completely ignored bottom lane. That just basically doesn't exist here for Nongshim. There's uh, another ulti from Umpty. Does dive in. It's a great barrel out from uh, Rich, though, who's trying to win this fight. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like Bro are just way too far behind. Humpty's even going to get chased down by Doc Dom. His killer instinct right into the back line. As there's the ulti from Delight. <laughs> Doesn't manage to tidy up Peanut right there, but it's a double kill. And Doc Dom is just having the time of his life. Make that one a triple. Rich is a real happy bee, and I think he's going to get it, to be perfectly honest. I feel like he's had almost 100% kill contribution. 2088, if it could be defined. Yep. It can't, because he hasn't died just yet. This Nexus turret going to go down. The next one going to follow suit very, very quickly. And once again today, we get a 25-minute shellacking. This time, it's Nongshim Red Force taking down Fred at Brion. Very, very dominant performance here from Nongshim, turning around what was a very passive game.